Pen. First on four, acclaimed filmmaker Molly Deneen reveals one of the most remarkable periods of turbulence for over 600 years and captures the poignant reactions from hereditary peers who lost the right to sit in the House of Lords. Here on the red benches of the Chamber of the House of Lords sit the peers of the realm. For the last four years, they've been the focus of a drama whose repercussions could affect us all. Gavron, Glanask, Lenamara, Harmsworth, Harris of Peckham, Henry. Some are lords appointed for their lifetime, but some are hereditary. The hereditaries are from families whose right to come to this place and contribute to the lawmaking process has been passed down the generations for hundreds of years. Many governments have considered the abolition of the hereditaries, but none has attempted it because they couldn't come up with a working alternative. This government felt more strongly. People say there's no Tory opposition anymore. Well, there is. It's alive and well and unelected and in the House of Lords with a three to one majority over us. And when we used the mandate the British people gave us at the ballot box to get rid of the power of those hereditary peers, I call that democracy. This promise was a popular one. It appealed to a party impatient to modernise the country. The hereditaries would go. After all, few could justify their continuing presence. But that's as far as the plans went. Inside Parliament, controversy raged over who would take their place. And today, three years after their departure, the dilemma is still unresolved. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Lord Was the removal of the hereditary peers in itself any guarantee of democracy? I wanted to tell the story of the end of the hereditary peerage in the House of Lords. The government wouldn't take part in the film and discouraged its party members from doing so too. So I focused on those who'd be banished. This is one side of the story, the hereditary side. After some 800 years, their time was up and, many felt, not before time. As I started filming in October 99, it was clear, even to an outsider, that the house was unsettled. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> the reform bill had been hanging over their heads for over a year, and the Lords had been doing their utmost to amend it. The government was now impatient for its business. I am bound to say to the House that on this particular bill, I represent and lead for the government, and the government feels very strongly as do my backbenchers on this matter, that we have wasted a great deal of time. Yeah. A 
an American commentator coined the phrase some time ago, clinging to the furniture. That's not a phrase much used in this country, but my lords, there are some of us on this side of the house whose patience with some of these motions is becoming stretched. It was a case of out with the old.